Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are dealing with how to break free from fearing what others think about you. My friend, every last one of us that walk this planet has to get to that place where we say, you know what? I am who I am. I'm going to be who I be. I am going to let God use my gifts. I'm going to let God use my talents, my voice, my mind, my emotions. Friends, once you come to that place, I want to give you a very profound yet simple thought because the Bible teaches us faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So that means that what you hear, you become. I want to ask you a question. What do you think Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, who wrote most of the New Testament, Elisha, the prophet of God who did more miracles than the prophet Elijah that preceded him, Moses, Joshua, Joseph, all these people we studied, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, friends, even Noah and Adam. What do they all have in common? Think, I want you to think because this answer is where we're going to begin to rest all our fears of man, uh, all of our fears of excelling to be who we really are, our true and our authentic self. What do they have in common? They are all dead. I'm going I'm to say it again. They are all dead. And in order for us to grab a hold to having self-worth uh, 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 that I am created in the image of God, I am a son of God, I love Jesus Christ, he's my Lord, he's my Savior, he has given me access back to, to God to have a relationship with him, I shall not fear man. My friends, when we begin to understand that each one of these men played a valuable part in history of our Messiah, but yet they're all dead. You and I shall find the same end. We are going to die. And you must understand that the time that we have been given, that we have been allotted, is like currency. It's like money. How do you choose to spend your currency, your time? Time is the most valuable commodity on the planet. And you and I have to come to a place where we decide, I am going the same way as Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, uh, Elisha, Elijah. I'm going the same way. And I choose to walk in the confidence of my Lord and my Savior who has set me free from sin. I have a relationship with the living God. My friend, that's how you break that thing off of your mind. The Bible teaches us, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The scriptures teach us, follow me because friend, you got to chew on this fact. You got to chew on it till you get that thing down in you that I have an allotted currency and I cannot allow it to keep running out on me concerned what people think about me. You got to get this in your head, friend. You are valuable. You are gifted. You are are important to God's work, his kingdom, and eternity. You are valuable. You got to get that in that skull, friend. Knock, knock, knock. You got to get it in. And you have to ponder. Currency time is ticking, ticking, ticking. 
The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, so a man think in his heart, so shall you be. And what happens, my friend, when you have tormenting fear of man and what they think about you, friend, I got to break this down for us. Because we don't understand the the common denominator of fear of man's thoughts, which is nothing but a thought. Thoughts can't kill you, even the way you look at me. I mean, folk can give you that eye. If I, you you know, we say if looks can, if I can kill you with these, I throw those eyes and just. Ugh. So so we say looks can kill. But the reality is, my friend, they cannot. No, they can't. The Bible teaches, my friend, because I'm going to give you the root of intense fear of man and what they think and what their opinion of you is, because it amounts to a zero with all the ends kicked out. What is important to man who has placed our hand in the Father's hand for salvation through Jesus Christ The only opinion is dad because he is going to judge every work we have done in this body suit, my friend, every last one of them. Oh, yes. Look what Jeremiah told us because this is the root of the matter. Cursed is the man. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Every follower of Jesus, we need to know this text. He said, cursed is the man or woman that puts his trust in human beings, in man, you're cursed. You walk with a dark cloud over you. Why? Because you are trusting in man for your promotion. And oftentimes we won't speak up because we don't want them to think that we're rocking the boat. So we sit back and we let all manner of evil and things is just all wrong. We won't say nothing. We have people in our lives that need to be snipped. We won't do it because we're afraid. What are they going to think about me if I raise up and go off up in here? Because sometimes, friends, the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. Sometimes when you are releasing that emotion, when something is wrong, it is proper. If someone was in a grocery store and slapped your kid, you go sit there and, and be concerned with that? No, I'm. something might go down for real. And what's happening, many of us have become prisoners of war inside our own heart and mind because we are cursed because we fear man, that dark cloud. And oftentimes it provokes anger because a lot of us are angry at ourselves because there's things we should have said and we didn't say it. We allowed that person to cower us down. And now we're feasting and festering over for months on and sometimes for years. Fear of man. Walking, my friends, this is many of us, walking with a ball and chain on our own hearts. Fearing man. It is, my friend, I got to give it to you straight. The fear of others' opinion of you becomes an idol. And guess what is the root of the idol? Self-worship. It's all about me. And when you have this disposition, my friend, you will know it because one of the uh, fruits of of self-worship, because you are a prisoner of your own self-assessment. You keep assessing yourself critically And in your mind, you're not good enough and people love you to pieces. They love your gifts. They love your expression. They love all that you're doing for the glory of God. They love that you are consistent. They love that you're poised. They love that you are articulate. You're crafty. You know how to work on things. You got that very engine, that mind like an engineer. You know how to solve problems. You know how to create things. You have a great gift to care for children. You are a great cook. You are a great teacher. You're all these things. And people... They, they say, wow, you do a great job. But when you come back to you, you just steady killing and beating yourself down. And let me tell you why God won't show up in that heart. Because God is saying when we do this to ourselves, 
we are touching his glory. Because God has created each one of us and gave, given each one of us a measure of gift and talent and skill set that if you will ho hone in and harness your fears, my friend, you can create great things. But no, you hold the lock and the key. You will know, my friend, that you have made yourself an idol and you have made what others Think about you, an idol, because you don't have no joy. You don't, you don't manifest the fruits of the spirit. Because you spend all your time, what they think about me. Well, I wonder what they think. You hang up the phone. I wonder. My friend, it's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I hope I did a good job. But when you sit there, and just keep rehearsing over and over and over again. You'd have made that thing a point of, of concentration. And you're going to lose your celebration of heart. Because now this thing that happened two, three weeks ago, you still doing this. It's idolatry, my friend. So, so you we ask this question. How do you cease caring what other people think about you and their opinion? You got to get your mind on what daddy say. You are gifted. You are called by him. And through all your pain, he has not changed his mind about your work, your assignment. You don't know what to do. God say, yeah, because I can't talk to you because the only person you rehearse in your head is you and them. God say, get them out of my way. Look, y'all, it's time to give all them crazy thoughts the boot. Get out of my head. I'm about to do what my daddy has called me to do. I'm going to say it the way I say it. I'm not going to try to be nobody else. It's time to stop the madness. Stop. Come on. It's time to start casting down vain imaginations. Friend, you got to do the work. Because remember what I said in the beginning of this exhortation. All of the men that we study and we quote from their writings are all dead. And God does not want you to leave out of this earth, my friend. And you have not lived out and empty out your potential in him. So it's time, my friend. I just stopped by. To cheer a couple of y'all on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's play ball. That's right. It's time to get you off that throne. I don't care what you think. My daddy think I'm a wonderful person. <clears throat> Why? Because the greater one is in me. Not me. I'm wonderful because he shall be called wonderful. Counselor, Prince of Peace. He lives, my friend. And if he's in you, he's in me. God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with you. And you do not have to be afraid of nobody. Fear God and keep his commandments to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbor as yourself. So my friend, when you move to the greatest commandments given to the New Testament church through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when you move there, Man will shrink. Oh, yes. Because you want to be your authentic self for his glory. Because I love him. And I want to please him. 
So if he tell me to yell, stomp, or do a cartwheel, I'm going to do it because it pleases him. And everybody else, just pray for me. Because this is what I believe daddy said. Come on, friend. You got to get that mentality. You got to shake all this other stuff off because you are needed in the army of God. Your authentic self. I love you, my friend. Till next time. No fear, no limits. And what you can and you will do for the glory of Jesus Christ, the commander and the chief of the army of God, King eternal, immortal, and invisible God. To him be all the glory in your life and my life forever. God bless you, my friend.